Jorge Navarro. Finally ending that run of this as well. You can see how cool it is. Jack's got his jacket on. Late to the grid there for Jake. Revs up in Moto2. We wait for the lights to go out. Good start from the speed off of De Gian Antonio. Not so good for Sam Lowe's on the front row. Marini it is that lead. Benini from 10th. He's already around the outside of Sam Lowe's into the first corner. Great launch off the line then by the number 30. Italiate on an A and Bastianini as we make our way through turn four. A few times this year, Sam Lowe's has struggled to get. We've got the inside, no way through. They're trying to attack Betseki down the hill to turn five. Betseki standing firm. There's Dix. Martin struggled on that opening lap. He's not had a race start for a while, but he's got work to do already. Moment, the Gian Antonio Navarro to keep the pressure on early doors, while Bastianini, Betseki, and Lowe's try to find their fixed start for him as Sam Lowe's looks to go up the inside of Anaya Bastianini, but he finds Betseki's bike right in his way. Produced a bit of a gap actually to the top three. He'll make it round and through on this opening lap. Which I executed to perfection for him from pole position. The Gian Antonio then in second, Navarro on that first lap. Bit of a gap then back to Betseki, who's under pressure from Bastianini. Lowe's running a tight inside. He's up into that top five. Yeah, could move that, but it sort of made you wince a bit because it looked very, very tight. The run with Marini got a lot of work to do now to try and find a way through on Marco Betseki. And then Nini as well, number 16, the American. Robert's getting his elbows out, he's made a couple of aggressive moves all the way after a good launch off the line. Jorge Martins dropped all the way back to 13th place now, and Ramirez all up the final point spot at the moment is Remy Gardner, he's moved up one spot from 16th on the grid. Yeah, good for Luca Marini as they climb up through into the stadium section. He crashed from a great position here last year, didn't he? Speed to go well around this uh, circuit in Catalonia. Can he challenge Luke Antonio, an Italian 1-2, then a bit of a gap back, almost half a second to Jorge Navarro, who's in turn on the inside of Sam Lowe's, can't make it through. Bastianini at the moment, not able to run the pace of the man in front, excellent rhythm from the Spaniard. Yeah, home circuit of course, he is a Catalan himself, number 97, he's just behind his team wide, and is he going to lose ground again? He does, he's got to be careful of Joe Roberts there, he will have though the inside line going into turn five. He's getting really beaten up here, he's been picked up by Dixon at turn five, that almost allows now Chabu Vierhe through as well. Not bad at all. This is interesting. Marini then leads, but De Gian Antonio De Gian Antonio closing down that gap. Now Sam Lowe's is into fourth. Can he pull himself closer? Thing a bit in the opening laps here, Matt, to get himself into any rhythm. Yeah, he was worried yesterday. He had that crash at turn two to push as hard as he wants. He's just trying to get those tyres up to nice optimum working temperature because as we've seen all weekend, having early baths here in Barcelona. No, that's not going to be a points finish then for Stefano Manzi or Dallaport. Well, Dallaport was on course for a third successive point scoring finish in Moto2. At the moment, the speed up, the corner speed of the speed up through turn three looks better than the Calix at the moment. Marini to make this a race, one of them being Sam Lowe's in fourth. And connects in tenth place. And then, is that Dallaport who's crashed again? Time to park it, son. So this will be... The first well, incident. Well, Manzi's done it. Well, who was Man, that on the inside hard. of yeah, Manzi? That's been a hit to come in. Oh, Thank you very much for yeah, that. How loose was he? How hard was he pushing that front Dunlop tyre into Turk out at all? He was in far too hot. All the hard work to do again now for the Spaniard. Well, that was like Greg Hancock in to ground now, though. Further back as well to Sam Lowe's in fourth. So we come across the line. Marini it is that's still leading. Yeah, that's a lot faster than Luca Marini, race leader. Three tenths quicker than Marini. His 43.998 was his looking really, really strong. Looks like there was three Italians involved in that incident. Dallaporta, Manzi and Bulliga. Swarming all over the back of Luca Marini's Calex, but obviously wants to make a move and make... Hurricane has got some good rhythm. In fact, he's ahead of Chavi Vier. Hey, that was tight, wasn't it? Between Betsecki and Roberts, that's cost. He's going the wrong way as well, like Bastianini. And there's a face as long as a wet Sunday. Do pay some riders who are paying for the qualifying, of course. They just can't get themselves anywhere near the top. 18. Yeah, and I was just about to say, Kinnett's having an excellent ride. He started way, way down in nine now with Chavi Vierhe board there with Sam Lowe's in fourth he's closed that gap down there might be another five the start finish straight we go 17 to go it was a 43 7 from Lowe's start finish straight and he's up yeah. into third he makes light work Lowe's of Navarro doesn't he on the brakes into the first and um, Bedzecki then seventh ahead of Bastianini then it's Vieke and Kinnett good old transat Bedzecki struggling
hasn't got rhythm at all. A couple of mistakes early on. Last lap was a 44-6. That was find himself a place on the grid for 2021. If he can keep it, get result for Luca Marini with the two speed ups uh, close there. And Sam Lowe's at the moment, not an immediate threat in terms of race pace on worn tyres. He's worked a lot on tyre durability. All the commentary curse, Matt. I think I've given Jake Dixon yeah, the commentary curse and he's gone down he's on the right side and he's absolutely livid. Well, where's, what's happened to Bedzeki? He's dropped down to 13th as well. Now yeah, that's going to be tough for Jake Dixon. Today. Look at that. He's trying to blip the throttle. There's nothing, There's nothing there. there. Nothing happening. He was on course for yet another top six finish. Now, Navarro's got his hands full now of Joe Roberts, hasn't he? Xavier Hay then is up to seventh. Kinect's up to eighth. Bedzeki in 12th. What happens? Looking to pounce on Fabio de Gian Antonio, not this time into turn five. It was a big mistake by Bet and Luca Marini. So something went horribly wrong for Betsecki. Lo is now over 1.6 seconds behind Sam Lowe's in third place, and he's got it. His work cut out, keeping Joe Ro control there into just a bit turn ten. That nearly sent the pair of them oh. into Barcelona. Marini really won't know that. He will not know how close that was. The drama unfolding behind him, but Sam Lowe's was a little bit snap out a bit, and that's exactly what happened to Sam Lowe's there. And you're right, Matt, it has cost them. These guys now as well for the Gian Antonio and Lowe's to get mired together because Marini put in his fastest lap of the race. 0.2 seconds between Marini and Sam Lowe's. Let's have a look then on the brakes. He came from a long way back, committed to the move. That was, they were pretty fortunate, weren't they, to get away with that one, the pair of them. Luke, well, the time saw it coming. Managed to sit up a bit. Now, further back, there's Navarro desperately trying to hold off Joe. Yeah. In fact, Kinect's up now. He's just got se seventh place. He, he did. He just got Bastian in on the brakes in the turn five. Stunning, sensational. Bit of a blip last time out in Mazzano too. But apart from that, he's been red hot all year. On the time screens on the left. Is this going to be a disaster for Petrona Sprinter? Double it disaster is. it is. I, that is a super fast. fast crash there. The fast right hander. He's gone all the way to the air fence. And that's one of the longest. Absolute dire 10 minutes or so for Petrona Sprinter racing. Tough one to take for Jake. The second out and Joe Roberts is now up into fourth as well. <laughs> Joe Roberts did he on the grid, said the Simon Crafer. Little nod of the head there from Chavi Vieja to the track marshal saying, yeah, I'm OK, but this is going to be a two DNFs in a week now. And look at that. The expression says it all from Raslan Razli. The high ecstatic, delirious, having signed Valentino Rossi for his Petronas Yamaha team next year in both the GP. They have top sixes on the cards. Yep, three spot on, Matt. That is racing. You know, there's so much coming up at three o'clock local time. Now, this gap is completely diminished at the front. A little twitch a moment ago as well from Luca Marino. No rhythm at all. He's about to get swallowed up by Augusto Fernandez. I mean, look, Connect got him about, what, a lap of a lap than Sam Lowe's. On to the home. This is Bedzeki. Good lap from him last time. He's in 10th, but something clearly happened to him in order to put him to ninth place. He made light work of the Swiss rider there. Yeah, Navarro's got nothing for Roberts. That gap now between the two. Lap six, turn 10, on board with Marco Bedzeki. That was a costly mistake. Look how many places he's losing. Ramirez had the pace. He didn't get a great start. He lost five, six places, but he started to now pick off a few. He Luca Marini and Sam Lowe's and you've got to think it's a matter of Sam Lowe's right now is not an immediate threat in this world championship he's a pretty smart guy he has not cracked he has not buckled and he's looked so solid at the moment a little bit of time again on this lap first sector was where Sam Lowe's was so so strong cross the hold uh, Luca Marino is pitbull, the pace of Sam Lowe's, 43.6, just letting him know exact counter and then think, OK, if that's the speed that Lowe's is carrying right now, if I can just carry this momentum to half race distance, so there's a long way for Marini to keep himself ahead of Sam Lowe's. Yeah, I mean, Sam's taken Lowe's, he's really comfortable, isn't he, in these first couple of sectors, like you say. Yeah, his eyes just lighting up right now, Sam Lowe's, three tap, he's on him, up through turn seven, flick it right through turn eight. This is the corner coming up where Vieira... 43.849 from the number 44. He's going to get his claws into Navarro pretty quickly. And then he... The Moto2 is so, so close. And I feel so sorry Somebody for those. Somebody was out wide there, Steve. Sorry, at turn 10. I'm not quite sure. Net's hard work then. It's got to be done all over again. I was just about to say that... And he's down in 24th place. That's how close it is in Moto2. Right. 
two toes might just fancy a move into turn five. There is Kinnett, who's now dropped on the previous lap, so he'd actually gained 13 places from a pretty poor qualifying. 19th he was going for turn 10, like the man ahead of him, Marco Betsecki did as well, so turn 10 not been kind to Kinnett and Betsecki. enough on this lap, but Marini will be able to hear him now. That's the Gian Antonio in third. Gardner's in 13th, it's 14th for Nagashima, and 15th right now for Hector Garso. Because Navarro is 1.3 seconds ahead of Anea Bastianini, who's now under pressure from Fernandez. Was that for back? Every point important here for Anea Bastianini with the Marini lead. Marini is going to have his hands full in a second. I think Sam Lowe's is weighing up Italian out front. Where does the move come as they cross the line? With 10 laps to go. Wise, Sam Lowe's on top. Through turn three, and it's if we could stay with Sam a bit. The race leader out of three then, into four now. Let's see how much he can close. You can see Lowe's there. Nice little look about the riding style comparison between the two and how they're attacking turn three. He's so good in this position. And it's just eyes coursing through those veins of Marini. He's not going to get rattled, he's not going to really try and force the issue here. Navarro's just found a bit of speed again. Been an excellent 50th Grand Prix so far in his career for Joe Roberts. Just what he would have wanted, a return to the top part of the Misano 2 last weekend. His first podium of this 2020 season. Across the line we go then with nine laps now to go. And that time around responded the World Championship leader. Bastianini, as he so often does, where's the best lap of his race? 43.934. Only a tenth quicker though than Navarro, so still. With the SAC team for next year, Tony Arbolino taking his spot in the Liquid Moly intact team. 42, who's in line here for his best result in Moto 2. Make it turn 10, but he's hanging on in there to his credit. On course for his first top six. He's taking a couple of tenths out in sector two. Hard breaking now into turn 10. Still. And there goes Navarro through on Joe Roberts, but he's not been able to. Behind Fabio De Gian Antonio. So the podium still on with nine laps to go. The extra breathing space De Gian Antonio is going to have. Somkiat Chant has retired. His dreadful 2020. Amazing, isn't it? Further back. How many times last year did Jorge Navarro around this stage of a race? That's Chantra then going. Straight on at turn seven. Martin entering pit lane. What will that be? A horrendous month it's been for Jorge Martin contracting coronavirus and missing the last two vital hopes. They've completely evaporated now. So he battles on screen at the moment between number 16 here. A cheeky move into turn 10, but he's a lot closer as Navarro goes through. Can this time he make it stick? And then both of them haven't worked out for Jorge Navarro. Maybe it'll be third time lucky next time around. Yeah. Well, this is now a case, Steve, of who's kept the best life in that rear tyre. Slipstream, is he going to attack Luca Marini on the brakes into the first corner? He's going for it on the inside, Marini, first time. It's the perfect block pass into turn one, because you know that if you run it deep, you're flicking left into turn... Well, Marini will know straight away, won't he, whether or not he's got anything left for Sam Lowe. Showed up uh, earlier in the week, of course, World Superbike were here last weekend. Be cheering on Luca Marini. He's already taken a couple of tents out of him, just in that sector alone. Come through that fast turn nine. What does Marini do here? Really a potent threat in the World Championship. Still quite a few points adrift, so what will Marini do? Will he really risk? Do you give Sam Lowe's the confidence of a race win? Gift wrap it. Do you know what? Yeah, Side of the curbs through turn seven and eight it looked like, and then on the outside there, that he, ha he has got to be a bit careful here. There's six laps left. That battle still behind the Gian Antonio. So it looks like that little scrap is giving the Gian Antonio all the breathing space. He's got a long lap penalty. It's not the first penalty he's had. So two. Yeah, there he is at the moment behind Tetsuta Nagashima. Just ahead of Hector Gardo, who's on limits too often than Remy Gardner. So the long lap penalty coming his way. But it's Augusto Fernandez is entertained by it because he's closing in. You can just see in the background there, barrier from Marini. So Marini's deciding at the moment, well, I'm ready. 
to pick up the pieces. One mistake, Sam. Luca Marini's potential and strengths and weaknesses for a long lap, a lot of laps. And now it's the turn of Luca Marini. Mother GP stewards, you get uh, three chances, then you get the warning, and then if you do it, victory. Yeah, and Luca Marini will have seen every single bit of that as well. And if he can, can carry on applying the pressure on that last lap of 43.829, that was his fastest lap of the race, yet it was still slower than Sam Lowe's warm up session, which many miss Mazzano too. A long lap penalty here, long lap penalty I've seen in MotoGP so far. That really does punish second clear of Navarro and Roberts, but Navarro is quicker. Yeah, and Augusto Fernandez yet again was about four tenths faster than Joe Roberts ahead of him. Top five is the onboard of Sam Lowe's start. Again, not the best of starts, was it? The initial launch side into the first corner as well. Oh, yeah, and Bastianini as well. I mean, that's what would make this such a great win for Sam. That was awesome. Marini yet again. Another personal... Big, big questions being asked here of Luca Marini. He's having to work so, so hard to keep tabs with Sam Lowe's. He can sniff out Joe Roberts now with a few laps left. That would be precious points indeed. He'll be praying of Luca Marini, so that would limit some damage for him. Just look there like grab this between Bastianini and Fernandez. Fernandez was the pole man here last year. He's had a tough week he had in 2019 on the Calex chassis. Tom Luti's going south. He's just lost a place to his teammate Marcel Schrott. All that two tenths still being kept incredibly honest and being made to work for it. Sam Lowe's from Luca Marini. Ring between two and three tenths of a second. It'd be a nervy last lap though if they go into it with a couple of flag to come out right now. Been a long, long drawn out wait for victory yes again but he's gonna have to work hard for it because the world championship leader was quicker again on them as well for third between the Gian Antonio Navarro the speed up teammates Navarro just said his fastest lap of the race and running out of rear tire here and Luca Marini knows it he was a bit sideways through turn three then was Sam closing stages in Moto2 oh, oh he was almost yeah. out of the seat as well yeah and this is just gonna lot to encounter a few problems a few twitches a bit too much movement on that rear tyre would be, but he knows that it would really psychologically be a big blow to the opposition. Five, wasn't he through ten? Just a minuscule mistake by Lowe, just in hot by what, half a metre off. Better tyre life, rear grip, that means he'd be able to get in the slipstream on the start, finish straight and pull straight alongside. Could be the key thing, couldn't it? How much tyre did Lowe's use up trying to get through from fifth place? Marini out of the slipstream, in the pits with two to go. Yeah, Lowe's is struggling with rear grip here. He Beanie. Up towards turn four we go. Has Lowe's got to retaliate quickly. You can see here, rear grip wise again, that's not quite a good drive there now into turn six for Sam Lowe's. His throw is too. Luca Marini will not know it at this stage, but Sam Lowe's in hot at turn six. He could have settled for second. A ruthless champion's ride from Luca Marini into Turkey in that moment. Somkiat Chantra, well he's down, crashed at turn two. By Sam Lowe's, I don't think he's going to be able to get back on tabs with Luca Marini. Gian Antonio has managed to respond, he should be okay now. Yellow, Yellow flags into turn one, just 44.9. 1.1 seconds slower than Luca Marini. Augusto Fernandez, it's been a, a Sam Lowe's is going to have nothing for Luca Marini. Fernandez has given up a top six place, which would have been a great effort. Used up trying to barge his way through to the front. And how much tyres going full gas. Fabio Di Gian Antonio would be a great podium for him. Yeah, he's well on. Clap the Navarro and Roberts ahead of him. Seven tenths quicker than Jorge Navarro. His challenge is coming too little too late. And ten, that one's coming any second now. Oh, tight there. There is Navarro, Roberts and Dene. To get that time claw back on Navarro and Joe Roberts now. So Navarro looks like he's going to take that fourth place. Marini, he was asked questions and he's answered them. He wins here in Barcelona. A good effort from Sam again in the hands of Fabio De Gen Antonio. And it's been a long time coming that. Marini has lost big. Good effort there. A lot of respect between Marini and Sam Lowe's. And Luca Marini, a 20 point lead now, going into France. Lorenzo Baldessari is horrendous. All for Baldessari.
He's on his feet, but he's down to 14. That's a fast crash in the final quarter. So okay, he tumbled through the gravel trap. He had to work hard for that one, did he? Exceptionally hard, Luca Marini. But he take a moments on the uh, slip screen down into turn one. This was with two laps to go when Luca Marini. That's where he lost seven tenths of a second in turn eight. And that was game over. Luca Marini left for him. Decisive victory. Big swing in his favour in the championship. He took 15 points out of Anea Bastian.